then let me just tell you where participative capital which was a concept for me but where the whole thing became real was during the tsunami because the fishing community when the tsunami hit all the ngos and ingos international organization and indian organizations everybody said this is a very very good time for social engineering or reengineering so let's take the poorest people and work with the poorest people you know so that? who are the poorest of the poor among the fishing community the people with no boats the crew members this is an assumption that was universally made by everybody outside the fishing community the fishing community and the people who have been working with the fishing community for many years told us that assumption is wrong and they kept arguing this is not how the fishing economy works class does not emerge with the ownership of capital or a capital asset and so you cannot equate which we all did a boatless person or a crew member with a landless laborer a catamaran or the traditional boat owner with a marginal farmer a outboat owner you know a fiberglass boat with an outboat uh, a fiberglass boat with an outboard motor you can't equate that person with a marginal farmer it doesn't work like that in the economy i didn't to be honest i didn't believe it so i took a group of young fishermen with me who might got very close to and i said let's take a walk around the village and i will demonstrate to you that class actually emerges and i can tell you while walking through the village who is a boat owner who is a catamaran owner and who is a crew member so we went over there we saw one ram shackle hut thatched roof pretty bad shape and that i said this is 100% a crew member doesn't own a boat they said okay that's right so i felt damn good yeah so here's my experiment going to work I went to the second house and i said that's a crew member nice house concrete double story i said sir not a crew member i said he has to be a boat member correct so then i got even more joshed up and i said okay now i am on a roll you know i am going to prove my point i went about the fourth or fifth house and it's one ram shackle house and i said very confidently ha ah, this is a crew member they said, la, la, la. it's not a crew member they said then who this man owns a boat he has a fiberglass boat he owns net and he has outboard engine and i said how come then we went around and then one nice building you know at least 3 and 1/2 4 lakhs building is a crew members and suddenly i realized that there is no pattern the wealth of the family is not based on the capital asset that they own which is true in all other agricultural economy industrial economy wealth is very very related to the capital asset there is a correlation between the two so trying to understand why that does not happen in this why doesn't the ownership of capital result in an accumulation of wealth which happens in other economies so looking at that the fishing economy we discovered something very interesting when the boat owner goes on a fishing expedition he does not employ crew members that is the crucial point he invites the crew members to join him on a fishing expedition and when they go when they come back they take the catch they deduct whatever were operational expenses for the diesel their food and all that that is deducted the remaining is shared one share for the boat one share for the engine one share for the net and one share for each of the crew members so the crew member instead of being a laborer here is actually a shareholder he is an investor he is a core investor with the owner of the asset with the investor of capital so i invest capital by owning a boat you invest your labor by fishing with me we both have a share you are also a shareholder and this has resulted for a much much more equitable distribution of wealth and going further digging deeper into it giving my this thing of obsession with power and understanding power relationships i wanted to see whether okay does this difference between owning a capital asset and being uh, you know assetless person does it reflect in other power relationships so we looked at for instance marriages so we looked at all the marriages and we found there absolutely no pattern crew members marry boat owners boat owners marry crew members no issue there and both male and it's not like only one this thing only men the poor of one family girls of one poor family marrying it's not like that it's all mixed up then we looked at the traditional panchayat not the electoral panchayat the traditional fishing panchayat whether positions went to boat owners again no pattern and when we are discussing this with the fishermen and the women all of them present over there this one man was standing because there's no not enough space we are all squeezed in this one man was standing 
he there's a young boy standing here and there's a much older man standing and then he asked me he puts his hand on this boy and he said do you know who this boy is so i said no i don't know so he said this boy is my crew member and in the tholu vera he comes as labor for me on my boat and he said can you see anywhere else where he will sit and i am the boat on i am standing i am older and i am standing he is younger and he is sitting he is a crew member and he is sitting i am a boat on i am standing so we suddenly realized that if you rejig the way capital works in the economy you can bring about a lot of other social change even in the social sphere not just in the economic sphere and that was the birth of participative capital we launched a pilot a few years ago where we had a conference in bangalore where we invited a lot of people and on the floor of the house we raised 8 lakhs 